So when it comes to romantic relationships, many people, when it comes to the houses of Vedic astrology, know to look at the seventh house. And that is a very, very important house to study and learn. Seventh house has to do with our contracts that we make, our one-on-one -on -one relationships. So when it comes to marriage, you know, whether or not a person really wants marriage, wants commitment, will remain committed in a marriage to the contract with which the two of you establish those things a lot of those things can be seen from the seventh house um and so in addition to that today i would like to discuss the fifth house of vedic astrology and how our fifth house plays into the nature of romantic relationships um you know if you watch a, a lot of western television you're probably aware of this kind of like it's almost like a trope where you know it's like somebody these two people were dating say in high school or just you know for whatever period of time and they're wonderfully compatible you know the person they're dating is like happy and fun and witty and loves to make jokes and take them on on dates and then they get married years go by and that person behaves very very differently and then that person is left feeling like wow you know like I married this person because they're so fun to be around and I really enjoyed my time with this person. They were so romantic. And then after we got married, their behavior changed. And now I feel like I'm, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so part of this dynamic can be seen by understanding the difference between the fifth and the seventh house, the, the house of romance and dating, which is the fifth house and the house of marriage and contracts, which is the seventh house. And then in addition to this, which is, I'm going to have to have this other point for another video, but very, very important and central and foundational to this um, dynamic is also how the birth chart and the Navamsha chart, the D1 and the D9, interact with one another. Because if we our Navamsha charts or D9 charts activate when we get married. That's also the person whom we become as we get older, around the ages like 34 to 36. Um, and so people change, they grow up and, you know, the Navamta chart is the way that we're able to perceive who a person is in marriage and who they're becoming and growing into in general. So with that said, today we're going to be talking about the fifth house and, you know, how that interacts with our romantic sinistry dynamics. So, you, you've ever been like, you know, single for a period of time and, and you feel like you're looking for a romantic relationship and you have all these wonderful feelings kind of pent up inside. You want to express these magnificent feelings. You want to express romance. You want to express, you know, you, you feel like when you get into a romantic relationship, you can really shine as a person and, and allow your soul to express itself in this phenomenal way. You know, and, and you feel like you're being really fulfilled, you're being authentic to yourself. In a lot of ways, entering into a romantic relationship allows us to be more fully ourselves. And, you know, that's a, a big part of the appeal of being in romantic relationships and dating. You know, it's like um, we get to express who we truly authentically are. And we get to feel nourished in that similar manner, like nourished on this deep, deep soul level. And so it's fascinating that the fifth house, which is the house of dating and romance and casual sex and children and creative, authentic expression, um, is ruled by Leo and ruled by the sun. And so, you know, when we're dating, um, we're entering into a romantic relationship, it's like now we can be ourselves. So this is a very, very beautiful thing. It's, it's very fulfilling in our soul, which is the sun, the Atman, to be able to be fully and truly ourselves. Now what's interesting is that the seventh house is ruled by Libra and Venus. And Libra is the sign of other people. It's the sign of compromise. It's the sign of the, it's the house of the marketplace. So in the marketplace, you're like, okay, you know, I've got this much money. Um, this person's got this product, we're going to do an equivalent exchange of value and I'm going to get, you know, this thing that I want and they're going to get this thing that they want, right? So you might have to compromise because like you probably would want the money and the product, right? That's what you would want, <laughs> but you have to compromise and say, okay, I'll give you this money or I'll give you this, this product. You give me this product. All right. And that's how that kind of works. So 
you know, the sun is debilitated in the seventh house and in Libra. Now, isn't that fascinating that you have here the house and the sign and the planet, which rules romance. You have a sun and you also do have like Venus ruling romance, but the house that rules romance, you have all this stuff going on. It's the sun makes us feel good here being debilitated in the house, uh, in, the, in this house of marriage. So this is something that's very important to understand and why, you know, you'll see a lot of people in our modern society where they'll just kind of want to be dating perpetually and not want to get married because all of a sudden when you get married, you know, it's like some of that thrill can, can kind of take the edge off. You know, it's just like, well, now I got to sit here. I'm limited to one person. You know, all these other fun things that I could be doing, I could be, you know, having all these kinds of fun experiences, dating this person, dating this person, having sex over here, going on these dates, you know, expressing myself in this way freely you know, freely. Now I have to sit here in this kind of a structure and, you know, I have to sort of have this contract where if I want to go on a date, I have to now negotiate. Okay. Will you take me out on a date every Friday? Right. Or can we, can we do a date night every Friday? And that person might say yes. They might say no. And you're like, ah, oh, all right, well, let's negotiate some more. Okay. You know, let's figure this out. Right. Whereas before, if you're, if you're not married, you're just frolicking around being completely yourself. And then it's like, okay, I'm going to go on a date with this person. They want to take me out. Oh, okay. You know, I'll go over here, date this person. Oh, okay. If that person suddenly doesn't want to take you on a date anymore, and they start acting some other way, you're like, well, we're not married. So I'll go over here and I'll date somebody who wants to give me what I want, right? So you start to see that there's, there's some distinctions here, okay? So the fifth house also has to do with the honeymoon phase of a relationship. So you get married and you go on this honeymoon. And every, everybody knows the honeymoon is supposed to be paradisaic, you know, sunshine and rainbows. You're traveling and you're going to some beautiful place. It's super romantic. You know, you go to France <laughs> or whatever it is, you know, um, and you're enjoying yourself. You feel like you're, you're being yourself. You're being nourished. You have the attention on you, the sun, right? And you get home. And then maybe the person has to go to work, your partner has to go to work, whatever like that. And then you guys haven't been on a date night in however long. And you're like, what happened? All right. So it's very, very important to be able to understand compatibility both from both of your fifth houses and from your seventh houses. And also to have, like, like by studying Jyotish, you're able to understand like what marriage is, what dating is. And then if you understand this, you can really begin to meet your needs in a long-term way. So it's like, okay, I understand that marriage is like this and this. So let me make sure that I'm with a partner who understands that I want romance for, you know, the rest of my life, you know, or maybe, you know, the, you know, whatever it is that you want for the rest of your life. And also like knowing the form in which that person expresses romance, the form in which that person forms contracts, et cetera, et cetera. You know, there are some people say if they have certain placements in the seventh house, they may get married thinking that. It's just going to be perpetually sunshine, rainbows, and, and fun honeymoon all the time. And then when any time any type of compromise happens, they're like, what do you mean? I'm not willing to compromise. I just want what I want all the time, no matter what. So if you're going to ask me to compromise. I'm just going to either go behind your back to get what I want, or I'm just going to leave, right? And you can see that kind of stuff from the seventh house, all right? Um, and there are people who will date and be in romance, and they're immediately just like, as soon as they get in, go on a date, they're like, marriage? Like, am I... Is this a this is a marriage partner? Is this and just think about marriage the whole time, <laughs> from the very beginning, first date, okay? So yeah, that's very very important to understand. And, and when you're studying Jyotish synastry, you're able to look at a person's chart and be like, okay, like you know, this person's fifth lord is here, this person's seventh lord is here. Here's what marriage means to them. Here's what dating means to them. Are we compatible? Yes, no, maybe so, right? So something that will really help you to perceive compatibility is to look at the fifth and seventh house, see the fun and the and the, the marriage, the contract, see the sign that's in each of those positions, and then look at your partner's fifth and seventh house, see the signs that are in those positions, and then see if, say, both of your seventh house signs are compatible and both of your fifth house signs are compatible. So, you know, you, this you are able to discern from the planetary relationships. It's like Venus and Saturn are friends. Mars and Saturn are not friends. Sun and Mars are friends. You know, but Sun and Rahu are not friends. So you're able to kind of understand the compatibility 
by understanding these planetary relationships. And then also, so you want to do that with the fifth house and your partner's fifth house, your seventh house and your partner's seventh house. Then also you want to look at the relationship between the fifth and seventh houses in your chart. So how, how compatible is your marriage with your romance in general? And do that with your partner as well. And then do that in terms of synastry. So see, you know, how does your fifth house pair up with your partner's seventh house? How does your partner's fifth house pair up with your seventh house? And you do all the combinations of that. And that will give you a lot of insight into the energies at play and how well those things merge together. Because there are some people, they get married and then all of a sudden they don't want to do the romance thing anymore. And there are people who want to do the romance thing so much that they'll never get married. Okay, so this will help you understand those dynamics. And then in addition to that, you want to look at the position of the house lords. All right, so by house lord, we mean, uh, say, someone has Libra in their um, seventh house. That means that Venus, because Venus rules Libra, is their seventh house lord. All right, so then say Venus is posited in um, the first house. That means seventh lord is in the first house. And you can see like why a person wants to get married or a big part of why a person wants to get married by looking at the seventh house lord. So, you know, if somebody um, has seventh house lord in the um, 10th house, they're really going to be drawn towards getting married so that they can pursue some type of goal in life. They have some kind of mission, some type of goal, some type of purpose. Um, it could also be, you know, have something to do with like marrying uh, for a high position or status, like marrying somebody who's like very responsible. You know, they're like a CEO. They're a, there's some type of title, you know, somebody who's able to advance in society, somebody who has a standing in society that's viewed as important will be very important to them. Um, you know, their mission can be a lot of things because the 10th house isn't just career. So it's not just marrying for status or things like that, but it, it, it can be in some, in some cases, but it has to do with our karmic actions in the world. Like what do we want to accomplish in the world? And so whoever they marry they really want to kind of have this sort of power couple dynamic where they're able to pursue their goals in the world together. All right. Um, help each other achieve their, their goal there. You know, you have seventh Lord in um, the fifth house. This person will want to get married so that they can have romance. So they can have this beautiful fairy tale, you know, type of dynamic. Now, of course, the sign matters houses in the planets in the fifth house matter, but you know, you have that dynamic. They want to have fun. They want to also have kids, most likely. So you'll you'll see people who get married because they want to have babies. Um, you know, they they want to get married to maybe an artist or someone who helps to uh, enhance their art in some ways. Maybe someone who acts like a muse or inspiration to their artistic endeavors. You can see from seventh lord in the fifth house. Um, you know, seventh lord in the first house. You have somebody who gets married so that they can develop themselves so they can really feel like their personality is developing so they can really feel like ah, i am i am really on my path in life i'm really doing this thing which is really perfectly suited for me you know like they'll they'll have a very personal stake in a relationship you know um it's meant he's like you know and there might be that they really identify with that um marriage position for example like say for example they get married because i want to be a husband or i want to be a wife i want that right that's the identity that i want to have so they can get married for that reason all right so with the fifth house um you know you'll see why a person uh wants to date and what what romance means to them so you know you have romance in the sense of like fifth lord in the um, the seventh house will want to date and express romance and have romantic encounters so that it brings them closer to a marriage contract, something solid, something tangible. So like, okay, I am, I am moving into a space where now that thing connects. I am now in the stable position of having this marriage contract. This person, I got them locked down. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're mine now and I'm, I'm theirs. So you can kind of have that dynamic. They're going to be really focused on that um you know you have fifth lord in the first house you know of course the the fifth house lord which planet it is the sign planets aspects all that stuff is going to really influence this we're just talking about kind of like the basics here foundation 
Um, but you know, you have fifth lord in the first house. This person is going to be romantically dating because they love it. They love to feel good. They're like, I am the person who is super attractive. You know, I am the person who is romantic. That's the identity they want to have. That's the experience they want to have in life. That's the way they want their life path to flow. Okay. It's going to feel very personally nourishing to them. It's going to help them feel like themselves, feel like they're developing themselves and being themselves and on their correct life path to have these romantic encounters. So whenever they go on a date, that energy from the fifth house is going to flow straight to them, straight to the first house. They're going to be like, oh, yes, whew, I really feel like I'm getting, I'm getting mine right now. This is really good. This is really important. All right. Um, you know, you have fifth lord in the fourth house. You know, someone, this person, you know, might date and then hermit, kind of hermit date. You know, they might want to date inside, you know, for example. They might love to, to have a, a Netflix and chill kind of thing, you know. Like they're, they're, they're dining in a dinner. It's a dinner date in their home, right, or in their, their partner's home. They can be a little bit introverted in the romantic scene. And they'll also uh, be dating so that they can feel comfort, so they can feel secure, so they can feel cared for, so they can feel like, you know, there's a kind of um, comfortable boundary around them now. It's like they're kind of being held in cradles, like, okay, I feel safe. I feel like things are kind of predictable. Um, you know, I feel nourished. And, and they may also marry or be, I'm sorry, they may also um, date and have romance so they can feel like they have a home. Right. So that's something that's really, really uh, appealing to them. It's kind of like these very nested types of romantic endeavors here. So studying the fifth house Lord will give you a lot of insight into, you know, why a person is dating. And then you can see the relationship between the, that person's fifth house Lord and their seventh house Lord. So say, for example, you know, are they dating for the same reasons that they want to get married? Right. Someone, for example, might have fifth house Lord in the fifth house and they're dating because they love dating. They're dating so they can have fun. All right. They're like, woohoo. I just, I love this. This is great. This is a lot of fun to do this thing. Right. Um, and then they may have seventh Lord in the 10th house. So then, you know, they're dating because they might date somebody who's really fun, who takes them out on great dates. You know, somebody who's really good in bed, someone who, you know, likes the same food as them, likes the same, you know, media, art, movies, books, stuff like that. But if that person doesn't have maybe a high status or that person doesn't share the same ultimate life goal as them, they're like, look, I, dating you is fine. Marrying you is something completely different. You know what I mean? Like, man, I need somebody who is like on point with their mission in life to marry or somebody who supports my goals in life, what I'm trying to accomplish in the world. So you see, somebody might be dating compatible, but maybe not marriage compatible. Somebody may be marriage compatible, but they might not necessarily be the best dater. You know what I mean? Like somebody might be younger, for example, and they're dating when they're young and they're dating all these people and they're like, okay, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then they might get married to someone later in life who they never would have dated when they were younger. They're like, why did I, you know, I didn't, like if I had just met this person when I was younger, I probably wouldn't have like dated them, but their marriage material, <laughs> you know, the person gets into their thirties and something like that, they're like this one, you know, because they have the, whatever those values and priorities are when it comes to marriage that person may have those things even if they wouldn't have like when they were in their early 20s thought they were the most fun person to date you know what i mean this will help you understand yourself this will definitely help you to understand your partner more understand compatibility more is that romance is fun that's why we love romance it's fun it feels good um so another thing that's important to note too is uh, the planets that are in the fifth house and planetary aspects. So if somebody has um, Saturn in the fifth house, that person will be more inclined over time to become more serious about like relationships. So like, you know, they won't be, you know, as inclined to like providing the romantic dates and, you know, constantly doting on you and being super romantic all the time and whispering sweet words of affection in your ear and being all like, you know, ooh, for you all the time. They're kind of, eventually that part of them is going to be a bit more serious. They have karma and things to fulfill. So they're going to be like, okay, like, you know, for me, what's romantic is somebody who, you know, helps me handle these responsibilities in life. Somebody who is like willing to kind of participate and help me clear this karma, whatever that is for that person, you know, and that will be, like romantic for them in a certain way you know 
Whereas someone who has Venus in the fifth house, you know, they're going to love to go out on the romantic dinners. They're going to love when you bring them flowers. They're going to love to whisper the sweet, beautiful things in your ear, you know, and to dress up for you and to, you know, do all these wonderful things. Venus in the fifth house is going to love those things. And the romance is going to be constantly, you know, present. That feel good, pleasurable feeling is going to constantly be present in the relationship. Okay. So I hope this helps, um, you know, give you some insight into the nature of the Vedic sinistry, you know, the distinctions between the fifth house and the seventh house. Cause you know, I feel like there's something that definitely needs to be talked about a lot more is, um, just in particular, like how all of these houses interact with relationships. Cause I feel like people will like, look at like seventh house, like it's the relationship house and it's like, all the houses have to do with romantic relationship. You're merging your whole being with someone like, you know, your home, your fourth house has to do with it. Your second house has to do with it. Your first house has to do with it. Every house has to do with relationships. Um, it's just about how specifically. And so I hope that this has given you some insight into that. So thank you very much for listening. And I look forward to talking to you again some more soon.